The Lord be with you. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to this service of worship at Mount Olive Presbyterian Church, and a merry, merry Christmas to you all. Um, out of an abundance of caution, our worship service continues to look just a little bit different in terms of its order. Masking is optional. We will continue to remain seated as we sing our hymns, and rather than passing the offering plates, you'll find them at the rear of the sanctuary. Uh, today's service will look a little more different still than our normal order, as today we are uh, going to enjoy a service of lessons and carols. Now, this is modeled on a service which is an annual event at King's College in Cambridge, England. And really, it's kind of neat because the theme of the service is the development through the scriptures of the Old and New Testament of the loving purpose of God in sending his son Jesus to be with us. And so you'll see through the, the readings how that theme progresses from our sin to God's covenant to the words of the prophet to the coming of Christ and then to uh, the, the prediction of uh, a world fulfilled with God's purposes. So our carols will help guide us as well. So you'll want to keep your um, hymnal very handy as we will be uh, you know, going quickly from text to singing and then to another text. Um, so having said that, just a few words of announcement for you all. Um, if you've not taken your point set at home and you ordered one, you are encouraged to take it after the service. Um, also, we're having a special. If you did not order a poinsettia, you are very welcome to take one as well. They are beautiful. And um, so please go ahead. If you know somebody who would like one, please feel free to take them. And a big thanks to Linda Roten for caring for them so lovingly. We appreciate it. Um, also, just a brief um, word about this week between Christmas and New Year's. Um, I will primarily be working at home this week. I'll be available by email, by phone, and of course, if there is an emergency, I'll, I'll be there, but I'm just going to spend a little time uh, with family and just getting prepared for the new year. Likewise, I'd suggest maybe just give the church office a call before you come if you need to come, just to make sure um, Cindy will be in and out as well, depending on her schedule. So thank you for that flexibility this week. It's a, it's a good week to take a little time away. Um, beyond that, I did want to share our joys and concerns in terms of our prayers today, um, because after our prelude, we will go into a time of prayer and the Lord's Prayer. So first of all, let me um, share a few words of update, and then if there are other concerns you might like to share, uh, please do so. Um, I, I received word, and some of you heard as well, um, an update on Lee Sargent. Um, Buffy says that, unfortunately, the chemotherapy mix that they're using doesn't seem to be working as well as they had hoped. He's had a few uh, tumors shrink, but a few appear larger, so they are going to reassess the mix that they are giving him, um, and they are also going to have to wait a little bit to hear whether the cyber knife treatment, the radiation that they are getting is working. They won't know that until February. So um, an anxious and, and disappointing time right now in terms of this treatment plan, but still lots of hope. Uh, so we will be praying for Lee and Buffy and all the family as the doctors uh, continue to uh, work on this treatment plan for him. We also want to keep Julie Graham and her family in, the, in, in our prayers. As you know, Ju Julie's father, B.J. Lee, suffered a stroke. Um, Don briefly shared that um, he, he's home, um, is raising Cain, in Don's words, and, um, but really is probably better suited for rehab and is not interested in doing that right now. So you can kind of understand there's just a lot of dynamics there at play we want to pray for. Um, you know, God to kind of work the situation for the, the good of all and that, um, you know, BJ will continue to improve in a safe way. So be in prayer for that family. Um, also, a brief update on um, Troy Lesher Thomas, our um, interim pastor, and his wife Mitzi. Um, most of you have heard, but some may not have, that Mitzi was diagnosed with a brain tumor, and um, she is waiting uh, 
to begin treat a treatment plan in the coming week. Uh, she has a Caring Bridge website that you can uh, sign up for just with your email and keep up on um, updates. Uh, the last picture was her decorating cookies. I mean, she's writing these beautiful um, words about, you know, uh, having walked with other families through these types of things. And now it's Troy and her turn to take this journey. And um, she's just such a spiritual and wonderful woman. But continue to pray for them and their two children. This is just incredibly hard. So um, we will be in prayer for them. Let's see. Also, just a brief update. Uh, Bruce Powell, a retired minister who we were praying for last week, indeed did die of COVID, and there was a funeral service in honor of his life well lived. So we remember him and his family. We also want to pray for um, for Vinnie Jordan, uh, Selena Bennett's mom. How are things? Just about the same? Okay. Pray for Vinnie as she is um, in recovery. Are there others uh, that we might be in prayer for today? Annette. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're looking great. I could hardly tell, but. Um. Okay, no. But, um, so Barry Giddings uh, is allowed to have visitors. Uh, you just need to call ahead and he can, um, you know, see you. Uh, he is, again, having trouble now swallowing. So he's on a special diet where they're thickening his liquids and, um, grinding his food so um, he is he is struggling he's still Barry and is uh, you know as gregarious as ever but this is a, a difficult time so we will remember him and we remember Edna Coulson um, Lynn Dale's mom um, she um, has had some health concerns is um, had a mild stroke that um, was shown on an MRI but um, is taking low dose aspirin and is very fortunate in that regard we want to continue to pray for her and for Lynn and all the family. Um, and it's good to have um, Kathy Mason's sister Caroline and her uncle Carl here today. We are delighted to have you both. Uh, welcome. And um, um, I, I know this is taking a long time. One more thing. Um, Desmond Tutu died. I think you all heard that. But he was just a wonderful uh, man of peace and of Christ. So we certainly pray for him. 90 years old. Good long life. But um, what, a, what a contributor to the world. So, okay, so I think that concludes uh, our concerns. Um, if there are no other concerns or announcements to share, we will um, prepare our hearts for worship as we listen to our prelude. And during that time, you are invited to pray for the needs of this church family, for our community, our nation, our world, for those leading our worship service, and for the Church of Jesus Christ in all places.
Let us now come to God in prayer, followed by the saying of the Lord's Prayer. Gracious God, in this Christmas season, it is our duty and our delight to prepare ourselves again to hear the message of the angels, to go in mind and heart to Bethlehem and to see this thing which has come to pass and the babe lying in the manger. Therefore, we pray that you would open our hearts as we hear again from Holy Scripture the tale of your loving purposes from the first days of our sin until the glorious redemption brought to us by this holy child. And let us make this house of prayer glad with our carols of praise. But first, because this of all things we know would rejoice the heart of Christ, let us pray to him for the needs of the whole world and for all his people. And so we pray for peace upon the earth he came to save. We pray for love and unity within the one church he did build. We pray for goodwill among all peoples. And particularly at this time, let us remember the poor, the cold, the hungry, the oppressed, the ill and them that mourn, the lonely and the unloved, the aged and the little children, and all who know not the Lord Jesus Christ or who love him not, or who by sin have grieved his heart of love. O oh God, lastly, we remember to you all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore and in a greater light, that multitude which no one can number, whose hope was in the word made flesh and with whom in this Lord Jesus we are forevermore one. O oh God, these prayers and praises we humbly offer up to your throne of heaven as together we join in the words that Christ himself taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now we'll join together in our opening hymn, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, number 31. We will do verses 1 and 3.
Our first lesson today comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 3, verses 1 through 7, 22 through 24. And it tells the story of the origins of human sin and our estrangement from God. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord had made. He said to the woman, did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the tree in the middle of the trees in the garden, but God said you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and she ate. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. And then the Lord God said, See, the man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil. And now he might reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken, and he drove out the man, and at the east of the Garden of Eden he placed the cherubim and a sword flaming and turning to guard the way to the tree of life. Now let's join together in our carol in our blue hymnal number two, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Our second lesson comes from Genesis chapter 22, verses 15 through 18. Uh, this occurs after Abraham is faithful to heed the call of God and sacrifice his son Isaac, but you remember that God intervenes 
and then in these words to follow, he renews the covenant with Abraham and he again reminds him of all the blessings uh, that he will surround not only Abraham's offspring but all the world through him. So hear these words. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, by myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son. I will indeed bless you and I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of the heaven and as the sands that are on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies and by your offspring shall all nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves because you have obeyed my voice. So now let's join in our carol, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, number nine in our blue hymnal. Our third lesson comes from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2 and 6, and it reflects the deep longing and the hope for a Savior uh, that was long predicted by the prophets of old. Uh, it also reminds us of the unconditional love of God, though we stray from God, though we can't save ourselves, God always responds with the gift of grace and of hope. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And now let's join in our carol, Angels from the Realms of Glory, verses 1 and 4, number 22 in our hymnal.
Our fourth lesson comes from the book of the prophet Micah, chapter 5, verses 2 through 5a. And this is a reminder of how God does his best work through the nobodies of the world, through the small and insignificant people and, and groups and clans and the way in which God works in amazing and unexpected ways. Uh, so hear these words of uh, prophecy uh, that a savior will rise from Bethlehem. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathoth, who are one of the cl little clans of Judah. From you shall come forth for me one who is to rule Israel, whose origin is of old from the ancient of days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth, and then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. Now join together in our carol, O little town of Bethlehem, verses 1 and 4, blue number 44. Our fifth lesson comes from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through 35 and verse 38. And here in this text, we hear of the announcement, the annunciation to Mary of God's daring plan to come into the world in human flesh, in the tender skin of a newborn baby. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But Mary was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, 
since I am a virgin. And the angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High God will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And then the angel departed from her. Let's join together now in carol number 40, Joy to the World, verses 3 and 4. Our sixth le lesson comes from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. And this is the beloved Christmas story which tells us of the birth of Jesus, the Christ, the long-awaited Savior. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth and Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Let's join together in the first Noel, number 56, the first verse. Our seventh lesson continues the story from Luke's Gospel, and it reminds us of the awe 
and the joy that must have come upon the world that night at the news of Christ's birth. Now in that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping, over, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then the angel of the Lord stood among them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. Now when the angels had left them and had gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. Let's join together in hymn number 37, Infant Holy, Infant Lowly. We'll sing the entire hymn. eighth lesson comes from the gospel according to Matthew chapter 2 verses 1 through 4 and 7 through 11 and it tells us two things first the opposition Jesus will face from his own people when he is seen as a threat to power in any way but it also tells us of the ways in which Jesus fulfills God's promise made to Abraham and those who came after him to be a blessing to all the world, even those who are outside of the covenant. And so the scripture brings us the visit of the Magi. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who was born king of the Jews? For we have observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. Now when King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. And then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. And then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go, search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. 
When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. And then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Let's join together now in hymn 53, What Child Is This? lesson, our ninth lesson, comes from the Gospel according to John, chapter 1, uh, portions of that chapter. And John's Gospel is unlike any of the others in terms of the, the grand and poetic language it uses, especially this beginning, which really reiterates the co-eternity of Christ with God and with the Holy Spirit, and also celebrates the powerful light that Christ brings into a dark and weary world. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or the will of man, but of God. 
and the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Let's join now in hymn number 41, O Come All Ye Faithful. Now let us join together in unison in the closing prayer printed in your bulletin. Eternal God, by the birth of Jesus Christ, you gave yourself to the world. Grant that, being born in our hearts, he may save us from our sins and restore within us the image and likeness of our Creator to whom be everlasting praise and glory, world without end. Amen. And now we join in our closing hymn, number 29, Go Tell It on the Mountain.
Well, we have a lot to be grateful for this morning. Uh, the beauty of the music that we've shared, the words of traditional hymns that tell us the story once again, um, the promise that rings down through the ages and the scriptures that we read of a God who will never let us go, from whom nothing can separate us. And so um, we look around and we see um, Catherine in a beautiful dress, light, uh, taking the light from the church. We hear Kathy's beautiful music. Uh, we feel the warmth of love in this sanctuary. And we are grateful that we are a part of the body of Christ. And so um, this week, this day, uh, choose um, what you will do to show your gratitude, whether it's with your, your giving, your prayers, your actions, your thoughts, all those things uh, to give back just a portion of what God has blessed us with. So please join with me in our prayer to bless our offering found printed in your bulletin. Gracious God, you work miracles. Nothing can hinder your purposes. Your love shines forth in your living word. We pray that the world will reflect your word. Use these offerings of our money, our energies, our very lives to create small miracles of transformation in our communities. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, when the shepherds heard the news of the newborn Christ, they ran eagerly to go and to tell. So likewise, this is your charge. As we go forth today, go forth as joyful messengers of the good news that Christ is born, Christ lives, and Christ reigns world without end. And may his grace and may the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit go with you to comfort, to keep you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.